Shalom, shalom, shalom. First and foremost, before we get this epistle started, I'd like to give all praises, honor, and glory to our beloved Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son, our beloved Lord and Savior, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rechak Wadash. Double honors as always to the apostles, the elders, and the sincere Akim of Great Millstone, who rule well, who teach well, who we learn the truth from daily, whether you hear for bearing and sincere salutations as always to the hopeful elect of the nation of Israel, as well as the speckled bird among that number, which are the Hebrew Israelite like foreigners scattered among the heathen that look like the heathen. And this is an epistle that I had entitled, Yes, This Makes You Better Than Them. And this came to me through the spirit after watching um, GMS Feed the Flock. All right, subscribe and be edified. And um, the elder Mathathia, all right, he mentioned something profound about how, why the reward for the elect of the nation of Israel, which would be the so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, the speckled bird, is going to be a greater reward. The reward for the elected nation of Israel is going to be a greater reward than it's going to be for the uh, the two thirds of the nation of Israel, because the one third, the elect, they have to constantly deny themselves. All right. There are things that we want while in this flesh, because obviously, you know, we're in the flesh. All right. And we war against the flesh by um, applying the law, statutes and commandments and the precepts in our lives to the best of our ability and following Yahweh Shai, whom the working calls Jesus Christ. And there and within the laws there are things that is lawful for you to desire such as you know um wine strong drink women uh you know certain earthly possessions so forth and so on but without the proper application of the scriptures it becomes easy for you to um it becomes easy for you to be sifted by the spiritual demon satan and to um getting sifted out of the truth and having these things you know become a snare unto you like, for example, it's, it's lawful for an Israelite man to have more than one wife. But unless you put the ministry first and foremost, having multiple wives can be a, a stumbling block unto you. That could be something that causes you to fall out the truth because you're too busy trying to please your women. Then you are trying to please the Lord. Or, you know, it's perfectly lawful to drink wine, a strong drink. But you may you be one of those brothers that, you know, can't really hold your liquor. Or you may, you know, you may have it where uh, you become impudent. All right, it's a precept in the book of Sirach that talks about how um, wine and harness will make a man impudent, roughly paraphrasing. But uh, first and foremost, let me get this first precept, which um, came to my mind once the elder, he had mentioned what he mentioned about how we have to deny ourselves. And that's going to be the main topic of this epistle. So this is the book of uh, Matthew chapter 22, verse 34. And it reads, but when the Pharisees had heard that he had put the Sadducees to silence, they were gathered together. Then one of them, which was a lawyer, asked him a question, tempting him and saying, Master, which is the greatest commandment in the law? You know, and one little quick comment on this. This just shows you how wicked niggas have always been the same hypocritical, you know, double talking ass serpents that they've always been because they, you know, coming coming towards our Lord Yahweh Shai, condescendingly calling him master like they mess with him or something like that, like he couldn't discern their spirits. Just like dudes nowadays that may not like Jake will sit right there and be like, hey, what's up, bro? Like, nah, don't call me, bro. We not cool, nigga. But anyway, verse 37, Yahweh Shai said unto him, and this is rare letters with Lord Yahweh Shai speaking, thou shalt love the Lord Yahweh Alahayaka with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. All right. Now, when you love Yahweh Bashmi Al Shah with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, what is your what 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 type of mo do you have? What type of um, what type of courses of action do you take? You make sure that everything you do is in line with these scriptures, with these precepts, and to the best of your ability, you fight the flesh and not lean on your own understanding. Okay. Which goes into this next verse, verse 39. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Now, right there, how do you, what defines you loving your neighbor as yourself? Not according to your emotions, according to the scriptures, according to the holy scriptures, which the world calls the holy Bible, Old Testament, Apocrypha, and New Testament. How do you love your neighbor according to the scriptures? By keeping the law, statutes, and commandments of the scriptures to the best of your ability. Because in these law, statutes, and commandments, when you're not offended, you can see the wisdom behind them. 
And this was one thing that popped up in my uh, in my mind once the elder had mentioned how the elect have to deny themselves. For example, like we understand that the two thirds, they're a bunch of wicked niggas and that they basically, you know, they get a lot of things that, you know, if you're looking at it from an earthly perspective, you you know, they don't deserve. All right. And even in um, and even in certain cases in the um, in certain scriptural accounts, these individuals don't deserve it. Or, you, or it may seem that way, but ultimately you got to remember that how about me shy doesn't make mistakes. All right. So, yeah, like. You, it may be situations where, all right, you a man of your how about shy, all right, and there's a there's a female that wants you or whatever, but she got a dude, and her dude could be a, a complete two third nigga, or he can, or maybe not like the most demonic nigga, but if anybody in this troop, they wicked anyway by default. But yeah, she may have a two third nigga, and she may be, she may look good, she may feel you or whatever, maybe some, you know, some type of. Uh, I don't like using that damn word, but some type of chemistry there, for lack of a better word. But ultimately, you love your neighbor as yourself. And this refers to Israelites in the faith, first and foremost. But even with that, even though we get on the two thirds, you know, the niggas, the nigger women, so forth and so on, we still got to strive lawfully. So what does that mean? That means I can't go ahead and just bag this dude's woman just because he's a two third nigger and she's feeling me or the opportunity may present itself, you know? That's how that's why our Lord Yahweh was saying that these are the two great commandments, and upon these hang all the law and the prophets. Because if you're doing these two right here, all right, mixed with the grace of Yahweh Shah, all right, you following Yahweh Shah, the grace of Yahweh Bashmi Al Shah, you doing you basically you um you know you in good standing with Yahweh Bashmi Al Shah if you maintain it and you continue in these things because you may not know. Every single breakdown, you may not know every single breakdown within the book of Zechariah or every single breakdown within the book of Romans or so forth and so on. But as the as the scriptures also say. I think it's no, it's little. I'm trying to make sure I type it right. little understanding sometimes i get the typing messed up for this one let me just go to the book of sirach i think it's in sirach 27 uh he that feared the lord it's not these precepts it's the it's like it's not these, these chapters it's the ones that get specifically into a man that feared the lord There we go. This is the book of Sirach, better known as Ecclesiastes, chapter 19, verse 24. And it reads, He that hath small understanding and feared the Most High is much better than one that hath much wisdom and transgresseth the law of the Most High. Right? Because if you if you have small understanding, that doesn't mean you don't know. I mean, that doesn't mean that you are an idiot or nothing like that. It just means that, like I said, you may not understand all of the deeper aspects of the precepts but you understand enough where you rooted in the doctrine you starting to you know you got the basics down and you have faith on Yahweh Bashmi Al Shah first and foremost and you have the fear of the Lord Yahweh Bashmi Al Shah the Lord he's dealing with you on that all right he may be dealing with you more strongly than he's dealing with an individual that knows um uh, the breakdown of Daniel the seventh chapter, the breakdown of Daniel the eighth chapter, Daniel the ninth chapter. All right, uh, uh, an individual that may know the entire breakdown of the book of first and second Esther's, so forth and so on. But that individual is transgressing the law. Like for example, some of you new brothers in the truth, you may uh, you may just have a basic understanding of uh, Deuteronomy the twentieth chapter, getting into the blessings and the curses. You may have a basic understanding of um. I'm trying to think of a basic precept, a basic understanding of the 12 tribe sign and the breakdown in Genesis, the 49th chapter that proves the 12 tribe sign. All right. And you fear the Lord, Yahweh Bashmi Al Shah, and you want to make sure that you always doing right by him as best you can in this flesh through Yahweh Shah's sacrifice. You are better off than a uh, native IUIC because he knows more than you and he's choosing not to do right by Yahweh Bashmi Al Shah. 
and that's wicked. Salakia. So but like, and, and it goes into one of the reasons why I constantly uh, bring out, or not bring out, but I constantly get into this, um, the, I mentioned how when it comes to the sin offerings in the law, the sin offerings were applied if you committed a sin in ignorance, all right? Or, you know, that's where the sin offerings was applied. It wasn't applied for Jake that was just willfully being a wicked nigga. So this is another reason why the Lord gave us this precept right here. So you can have comfort in realizing, look, there's grace and mercy for those that um, that diligently seek Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai. All right. Going back to this precept, the book of Proverbs chapter 24 verse 16 and it reads for a just man falleth seven times and riseth up again but the wicked shall fall into mischief all right so right there all right that means seven being a complete number it could be more could be less how many times the lord puts it on your spirit to fall so you can understand and you can prove your spirit within your own life so you can um you can really see your weaknesses in real time and you know notice them and pray to your bash me out once he's identified them, pray that the Lord gives you the strength to remove them. All right. And you can identify your strengths and build more upon those. OK, but the wicked is going to fall in the mission. They're not going to look at rebuke or uh, their mistakes as an opportunity to grow better. They're going to look at it as, you know, oh, I, no, I ain't making no mistake. You delusional. It's your problem. You know, a feminine nigga woman shit that even, you know, a feminine ass Jake men get into. They get into the nigga woman spirit, too. It's not just always Eve. It's a lot of effeminate ass broke wrist niggas in Israel as well. But, you know, going back to right here, the elect, we have to do a lot of things that, that where we deny ourselves, man. So like you're the hopeful elect, because you only find out that you're the, of the elect once you have a shy, you know, beams you up into these chariots, you know, or once you um, once you are martyred for his namesake after standing so stiffly for his name. But the point is, those of us that have uh, the faith and the fear of Yahweh Bashmi Al Shai, and we're, and we're striving lawfully to achieve that incorruptible crown, we have to deny a lot of things, man. It's opportunities that, that brothers could have had to uh, get uh, more uh, opportunities with money, okay? Uh, uh, opportunities to, you know, forward whatever business venture you wanted to have. Uh, I'm trying to think of things. It's not really too much popping in my head. I'm just going to name the simple things, you know, like with money or with women or whatever the case may be. And going back to women, it ain't, it ain't not got to necessarily be a situation with like an adulterous type situation where, OK, if I deal with this woman while she got a man, that would be adultery. So I got to deny that despite, you know, whatever the flesh may be telling me. It's not even just that. Sometimes it could be a woman that don't have a man, but you look at it, you know, with this precept. I think it's first Corinthians chapter six. First Corinthians chapter six and no, not that one, not that one. Yep, first Corinthians chapter 10, verse 23, and it reads, all things are lawful for me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but all things edify not. All right, now let me get the word expedient. Okay. Strong's G forty eight fifty one. Sumfero. 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 Outline the biblical usage to bear or bring together. Okay. To bear together or at the same time to carry with others to collect or contribute in order to help. To help be profitable, be expedient. Right. Like for example. You can have it like once again, it's it's lawful. It is lawful. It is lawful for a man to have more than one wife. OK, and it's also lawful for an Israelite man to, you know, have more than one woman, whether those women of the, uh, the nation of Israel or not. Now, the, the women of the nation of Israel are supposed to be wives and the women of the other nations, the heathen nations are supposed to be concubines. You're not supposed to marry them. All right. You can deal with them however you want to deal with them, whether it's just, you know, a little whatever type situation you got going on. It ain't got to be nothing serious. You damn sure ain't got to walk down the aisle with her or none of that bull crap if she's a heathen. But the point is, you got to look at it like this. And I forgot which brother said it. Good reminder, you know, obviously through the, through the spirit and power of your how about me, I'll shy. But you can't look at, a, look at a woman for her beauty. All right. Like the scripture says, look, uh, look not upon a woman for her beauty. That doesn't mean, oh, you're supposed to get a, a busted, you know, whatever looking type woman. Nah, it just simply means... 
don't let that be the primary reason why you want to get with her because Jake is simple. If you look at it like oh, that's the first thing you're looking at, it, after a while it becomes the only thing you look at. Then you start to allow a lot of stupid ass behavior out of her, then you got a damn demon on your hands. You know? But Dan, they about to sift you out of the truth, if not completely sifting you out of the truth. You got to worry about what a woman can do for you because that's her purpose a helpmate. All right? That means she's supposed to be on your program. All that other extra, that feminist bullshit Esau pushed, the self-proclaimed so-called white man, the red Hebrew Edomite, the devil that the Bible speaks of, that was meant to be a snare onto you. He knows that unlike unlike him, his weirdo ass, Jake likes women. Jake loves women. All right? Even, you know, even if Jake is just a regular working class, you know, type individual, he ain't got, Jake ain't even got to be the richest, but Jake wants women, bro. It's, it's within our DNA because we are the children of Yahweh Bosh Meow Shai. You know, Jake naturally wants to have multiple women to start a family, have children, and, and build an empire. That's what we're going to do in the kingdom anyway. You know, but right here, Esau has made everything that's natural. You know, that Yahweh Bosh Meow has made righteous. Esau has made it borderline unattainable. You may get one thing, but you're going to be deprived of 10 other things that the scripture said you're supposed to have. You may get two things, but then you're deprived of 20 other things the scripture said you're supposed to have. That's why we need the kingdom. That's why Esau got to go and two thirds got to go right along with him. OK. Now, uh, yeah, expedient, though, you know, like it, it may not even help you to have multiple women. You know, if the Lord, you know, blesses you and gives you a decent enough woman on this side, that's not a complete demon. She ain't got to be in the truth because it's really your job, Jake, to be in the truth. It's like once the men are in order, the rest follow suit because your how about me shy is dealing with the men through his only begotten son, your how shy. And then by the man being in order, listen to your how shy, then he deals with the woman. All right. And then the woman, if she's in order and she listens to that man of the Lord that the Lord sent her away to make her husband. All right. Then she can get blessed on account of that. Well, Salaki, she can get saved on account of that, as the scripture says in the book of First Timothy, chapter two, verse 16. All right. Now, let me go back to the word uh, edify. Strong's G, 3618, Oikadameo. 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 Outline the biblical usage. To build up a house, erect a building. Right, because, you know, first and foremost, we build in a spiritual temple, first and foremost, of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, which our Lord Yahweh Shai went on the cross and gave his life for, so we can build, all right, which is going to lead us into the kingdom of heaven. And then also, you know, in the process of doing that, you are building yourself up spiritually. You reclaiming true, uh, true manhood. Not none of this bullshit that Esau's system done perpetuated, where you got men and women arguing online all damn day about who's been, who brings what to the table. Oh, I'm the table. No, I'm the table. Oh, uh, I'm the prize. I'm the prize. All that bullshit, bro. And like, it gets to the point where I don't even want to hear it. I don't give a fuck. Even I know through the scriptures that. I don't even like saying the word, but I know that Yahweh Bosh Meow Shai has already made it clear that the man is more valuable. Now, a woman has a beautiful role, so don't come in with the feminist bullshit or, you know, trying to bear false witness and say anybody's a misogynist. No, a woman just has a role that is underneath the man's role. That's the hierarchy. All right. You don't get nowhere by having uh, like the word like they say in the world, too many chiefs, not enough Indians, roughly paraphrasing. So but that's what Esau promotes, man. He makes it where nothing's in order. You got too many people uh, vying and, and jocking for, for, uh, for leadership in places where that don't belong. That type of mentality does not belong there. All right. When a man and a woman don't understand they order, the earth is out of whack. Imagine how fucked up we would be if the trees was moving like how Esau has the Jake man and the Jake woman moving. Imagine if trees was out here like, no, I'm the male tree. I bring this to the table. And I'm the female tree. I bring this and that to the table. We wouldn't have no, you know what I'm saying? The bees would have a hard time catching pollen and delivering them with the way they need to go so we can have fruits and vegetables and, and, and all other different types of things that come off of the trees. I forgot who said it. I think it was one of the elder apostles that said it. But everything, like the birds, the trees, you know, all the, all the things in nature is in order. The thing that's out of order is man. All right? Because the Israelites fell off by falling the ways of the heathen, and to punish them, Yahweh Bosh Meon Shai set up the bases of men, Esau, Edom, all right, the son of perdition, to put everything out of course. So we can thoroughly understand what wickedness truly is, and come back to Yahweh Bosh Meon Shai, 
in righteousness and choose righteousness and rule in righteousness. All right, reading on definition A says to build up from the foundation, to restore by building, to rebuild, repair. Right. So it may be uh, lawful to have multiple wives. OK, but unless the work of your how about me is being done, you know, it's not going to help rebuild anything. It's probably going to bring you more trouble in the flesh, like the scripture says, you know, and then you got to look at it like this. You do you you're guaranteed to have trouble in the flesh because women are going to get to a point no matter how cool they may start off at first they may start to feel like you don't spend enough time with them or whatever the case may be and i'm not speaking to every brother you know you got to say it to jake sometimes it ain't about you know throwing what you what jake want to say a bad vibe or negative in it negativity on your situation no no this is just giving you the realistic aspects of it you know from brothers that actually have women when you have a woman they sometimes can feel like they're not getting enough attention xyz blah 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 and it may not necessarily be a situation of, oh, they're going to step out on you because of it. But that aside, they can start to, you know, throw temper tantrums and be real childish about it. And they become a demon. And that becomes Satan's way of trying to sift you from the truth. Uh, Siniazo, to test your faith to the verge of overthrow. You know, like Adam Natazakba did that video about that, that immature ass nigga woman. I believe she was a Jake who uh, destroyed that dude's, uh, what was that? His, uh, his NBA 2K account. That was worth, uh, what is that, like 400 bands, like $400,000, which is basically a livelihood that he's getting, he's basically getting paid to do what he loves to do. And she fucked that up because she was jealous of his attention, you know, and that's stupid. Like the elder, like the elder said, these same women always bitching them about Jake being dusty. But then when Jake gets money, because these women always claim, well, no, I, I submit for a real man, but I'm not going to submit for blah, blah, blah. Like, bitch, shut up. Eve says anything to sound deep and try to, you know, she thinks she's hitting Jake where it hurts, but all, all it shows is how fucking worthless she really is but basically they take this same spirit wherever they go because the issue isn't oh the jake man it, it well i'll say it like this the issue isn't solely the jake man doesn't have thus amount of money the issue is a lot of these bitches are just immature and they're not going to change so you are better off focusing on the kingdom of heaven like our lord yahweh shah himself said these are not my words our lord yahweh shah said seek ye first the kingdom of the most high and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you I'm going to get that precept in a minute. I don't want to write the So definition, uh, let me see. Metaphorically, to found, to establish, to promote in Hamashiachium growth, wisdom, affection, grace, virtue, holiness, blessedness, to grow in wisdom and piety. Right. So, you know, dealing with multiple wives or partying all the time or uh, uh, what's the other one? What's the other one? I'm, I'm trying to name things that are lawful, but are not expedient because it's easy to identify the things that are unlawful, you know, but Satan, he's crafty. He, you know, he's not gonna, he's not stupid. The spiritual demon Satan is not stupid. And he's dealing with his physical counterpart Esau who perpetuates this will to trip you up, Jake. So I'm gonna name the things that can be used as snares unto you that are not necessarily against the law, you know? Like these things that you can do may not necessarily be unlawful, but if you enjoy them too much in excess, it can be almost as detrimental unto you or just as detrimental unto you as something that is unlawful because one way or the other, it can sift you out the truth. Something unlawful, if you consistently keep doing it, oh, it's going to sift you out the truth. And something that's lawful, if you do it in excess, it will sift you out the truth. So Satan can achieve his, his end goal of sifting out the truth one way or the other. But you owe it to yourself to uh, uh, lean towards your how about me out shot, walk in the spirit so as not to fulfill the lust of the flesh. That's how you grow in wisdom and piety. Okay, that's the uh, word right here in the Greek for edifying. Oikodomeo. Okay, and right here, going back to definition B, where it says to restore by building, to rebuild or repair. Okay, if you don't apply these laws, statutes, and commandments in righteousness like we failed to do countless times before, you're not going to rebuild or repair the nation of Israel. Going, and then that, that brings me back to uh, these jakes that want to keep trying to start fucking Israelite communities and all this other unity bullshit. Nigga, that's certainly not going to rebuild nothing because the Lord don't want that. You know, if it doesn't go and go with the Lord's will, you just basically asking to get destroyed. But yeah, man, the elect deny themselves in a, a, a number of different avenues. 
Now, let me see um, if I can get that precept. Let him first deny. I think Yahweh Shah said this. There we go. The water Yahweh Shmiel Shah. This is the book of uh, Matthew chapter 16, starting at verse 24. And the subhead is just, it goes without saying. It says, discipleship is costly. And what is discipleship? That That's you being um, one of the Mashiachium, which is the Hebrew word for, um, you know, disciples of the anointed one. All right. That word Christian was first used in Antioch to describe the disciples of Yahweh Bashmiel Shah. It's like the disciples of Lord Yahweh Shah. Okay, it's a derogatory term, but anyway, uh, verse 24. Then said Yahweh Shai unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Okay? For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, and whosoever shall lose his life for my sake shall find it. For what is a man profit if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he shall reward every man according to his works. So if you basically spent this entire grace period that our Lord was humiliated, beaten on, spat on, had pissed on him and all that other type of stuff, he, he basically went through it for you to be saved, and you spent the grace period just fucking off. He's going to destroy you just like this is bad as he's going to destroy Esau. But if you if you spent this grace period striving to the best of your ability to uh, do do the work of Yahweh Bashmi Al Shah, then uh, he's going to reward you according to that. The Lord is fair and just and balanced. Those that basically strived for the uh, the gospel, endured all types of afflictions, endured whatever affliction Yahweh Bashmi Al Shah put on their plate. All right, had faith in Yahweh Bashmi Al Shah and um, kept his commandments to the best of their ability. They're going to get that reward for that. And yeah, the Lord is only dealing with you because he only cares about you because you're you're seeking righteousness. Two thirds of our people are a waste of space, man. And let me get this precept. John chapter 17. I'm starting at verse one. And this is the high priestly prayer. This is Lord Yahweh Shah. These words spake Yahweh Shah and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy son that thy son also may glorify thee. As thou hast given him all power, so like as thou have given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. Right. So the ones that so the Heavenly Father Yahweh gave our Lord Yahweh Shai the power to give eternal life to those of the nation of Israel that are of the elect on the first go round. Because ultimately all of Israel shall be saved as it is written, but the elect, the one third, will be saved on the first go round. Okay? And they'll receive the greater reward and greater greater rulership in the kingdom of heaven and greater rank. Okay? Verse 3. And this is life eternal, that they may know thee, the only true power, in Yahweh Shai Hamashayach, whom thou hast sent. All right? I have glorified thee on earth. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. All right. And this is talking about, okay, when our Lord Yahweh Shai was in his angelic glory. All right. When it was just him, the Heavenly Father Yahweh, all right, in the Allah the 144,000 in their angelic form before, um, before the man was created. Okay. And that's in, that account is in the book of Genesis, the first chapter, as well as some of it in the book of uh, John, the first chapter, explaining how our Lord Yahweh shines the word made flesh, if you can receive it. Verse 6, I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. Thine they were, and thou gavest them me, and they have kept thy word. Right, so, the, look, the Lord is very selective. He's always with the separatism, man. He separated the other nations that came out of Adam and was only dealing with the chosen line that came out of Adam, the sons of God. Then, from them, he deleted all of those wicked niggas, okay, our ancestors, before they, before they were called Israelites, they were called the sons of God, the Adamites, all right, and, they, and he saved Noah and his wife and Noah's three sons and their wives, and then from, the, from Noah's three sons came everybody that you see on the earth today. Out of those three sons, he dealt with Shem, 
And out of that line came Eber, which is where you get Hebrew from, Ibar. Then out of that line, further on down the line, you get our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Jacob's 12 sons, the 12 patriarchs of the tribes of Israel. And yeah, even amongst the 12 tribes of Israel, now the Lord is only dealing with the elect of the, of the nation of Israel. Verse 7. And now, now they have known that all things whatsoever thou hast given me are of thee. For I have given unto such. So like I have given unto them the words which thou gavest me and they have received them and have known surely that I came out from thee and they had believed that so like and they have believed that thou didst send me. I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me for they are thine and all mine are thine and, and thine are mine and I am glorified in them. And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world. And I come to thee, Holy Father, keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. Those that thou gavest me I have kept, and none of them is lost but the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. So our Lord Yahweh Shai, this high priestly prayer was for the elect. All right, he didn't pray for two thirds of our own people. Okay, not on his side anyway. They they got to they got to get the ass whooping of a lifetime. They're gonna <laughs> they're gonna drink the same portion that Esau is gonna drink on this side when the destruction comes. They'll be all right in the kingdom, but <laughs> Jake is gonna go through it on this side because they just choosing to be wicked. Uh, let me see. It was another precept that I had. Uh, what is that? Yep, because I mentioned it earlier. Second Ezra chapter 9. And I think I'm going to start at verse 12. Oh, Salaki, I went up too high. Here we go. Let me go right here. Second Ezra chapter nine, verse seven, and it reads, and everyone that shall be saved and shall be able to escape by his works and by faith, whereby ye have believed shall be preserved from the said perils and shall see my salvation in my land. All right. The, the land of Israel with Jerusalem being the capital. That's the promised land given to his chosen people. The true biblical Hebrew is like the so-called Negroes, Latinos and Native Americans, the speckled bird. And within my borders, for I have sanctified them for me from the beginning. Verse nine, then shall they be in pitiful case, which now have abused my ways and they that have cast them away despitefully shall dwell in torments. So the two thirds of our people that are choosing to serve their own bellies other than Yahweh Bashmi Al Shai, these nigger women that can't shut their fucking mouth when they're in the house of the most high, these two third niggas that always got some gang saying bullshit to say. That choose wickedness, that want to keep being adulterous, sleeping with other men's wives. They want to keep being moles. They want to keep eating abominable foods. They want to keep uh, uh, doing orgies. All this other wicked stuff your how about your shots against. They want to keep being Satanists, idolaters, all this other type of stuff. The Lord, here's the reward for them. Second Ezra chapter 9, verse 9, and it reads, Then they shall be in pitiful case, which now have abused my ways, and they that have cast them away despitefully shall dwell in torments. For, at, for such as in their life have received benefits and have not known me. Jake got so bugged out by being in, uh, on this side so long, all right? They moving in the flesh for these corruptible crowns that the Lord is telling you, hey, I'm about to destroy all of this. Seek an incorruptible crown. Nah, I don't believe in that. Okay. Okay. You, you, got, you got bugged out over Esau's paper money that now you don't understand what true wealth is. Okay. Verse 11. And they that have loathed my law while they had yet liberty and when as yet place of repentance was open unto them through our Lord Yahweh Shai's sacrifice and understood not but despised it, the same must know it after death by pain. So all of Israel is going to be made righteous after going through this straight gate and suffering for, for our sins. But the elect, he's going to deliver them out of it. He's punishing us now in certain areas and refining our spirits. So we can learn righteousness and enter into the kingdom of heaven on the first go round. The two thirds going to learn it too, but through death by pain because they're rebellious. They don't want to suffer now for Yahweh Bashmi Al Shai's sake. They go through a little bit of worldly suffering and, and Jake ready to, you know, do drugs, you know, uh, weed, whatever you want to do, uh, uh, liquor, 
you know, try to try to uh, try to screw the pain away. You know, all types of bull, all types of folly and fleshly stuff that's not going to do anything. All right. Verse 13. And it reads, and therefore be not thou curious how the ungodly shall be punished and when, but inquire how the righteous shall be saved, whose the world is and for whom the world is created. Then answered I and said, I have seen this before and now do speak and will speak it also hereafter that there be many more of them which perish than of them which shall be saved like a wave is greater than a drop so if the lord gave you this truth you are better than the rest of the nation of israel and if you're better than the rest of the nation of israel you're better than these damn heathen by default it's no competition and i'm gonna prove that with another quick precept The book of Isaiah, chapter 40, and I think it's in verse 14. Yep, verse 15. It's like you. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 15, and it reads, Behold, the nations are as a drop of a bucket, and are counted as the small dust of the balance. Behold, he taketh up the isles as a very little thing. And Lebanon, I mean, the isles meaning the islands, you know, wherever you, these large land masses of heathen may be, the Lord don't give a damn how many it is, how numerous they are, how great the empires is. It's not anything to the Lord. He made them, he gave them whatever bit of greatness or whatever they got. He doesn't care. It's nothing. He's giving them their time to shine right now before they go into captivity. Verse 16, and Lebanon is not sufficient to burn, nor the beast thereof sufficient for a burnt offering. All the nations before him are as nothing, and they are counted to him less than nothing in vanity. Now, one may say, well, all the nations, that includes Israel. You know, this is just the Lord telling you that we're all nothing, but brother, through Jesus Christ, we can all be saved. Okay, let's see. Let's see that real quick. Let me prove you wrong on that one. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 41, verse 8. And it reads, but thou, Israel, art my servant, Jacob, who I have chosen. So like you, Jacob, whom I have chosen, the seed of Abraham, my friend. The Lord doesn't forget, man. He doesn't have Alzheimer's like a lot of you niggas. Okay. A day to the Lord is as a thousand years and a thousand years is as one day. Roughly paraphrasing as it says in the book of Peter. I believe it's first Peter or second Peter. I forgot which one. Uh, but the point is the Lord, he doesn't forget. He's the God of the living. All right. He's the living power. So if he's saying all these things, it's because <laughs> the Lord, Abraham passing away in one incarnation, it didn't mean, oh, the promises are disannulled with his chosen seed. No, Abraham is going to be back alive and well. All right. If he's not back already. All right. He's going to come back when Lord Yahweh Shai returns with the elect, when New Jerusalem descends down and puts to death these heathen. All right. But the point is, verse nine, thou whom I have taken from the ends of the earth and called thee from the chief men thereof and said unto thee, thou art my servant. I have chosen thee and have not cast thee away. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy power, not the nations. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Our Lord, Yahweh Shai HaMashiach, our, our Redeemer, our Mediator, High Priest, and way back to the Heavenly Father, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. That's not for you damn heathen. You don't need that. You weren't part of the first covenant. You don't need redemption for the sins you committed under the first covenant because you was never up under it. You was basically making Israel go off. Israel was going after your gods, offending Yahweh Bashmi Shai, and you niggas was going against Israel every chance you got. So, no. This is not for you. And you definitely went up against Israel once they fell. You forwarded the affliction with Esau. So all of you damn heathen are going right into captivity. The Lord said he chosen us from among the chief men thereof. Meaning among you, all you high level heathen that think that you hot shit. Even in ancient times, the Lord did what? He took our forefathers out of Egypt, which was the which was the America of the ancient world. The superpower of the days, the superpower of, of the ancient world so to speak in that era that's how much he he loves israel he didn't care about your carnal this and that that's why he built pharaoh up just to knock him down 
to prove a point. He don't care. Just like in this society, it's going to collapse. And only the elected nation of Israel can see it clear as day. Now, my next precept. And I love this one right here. Jeremiah. I think it's chapter 50. I hate when it does this bullshit. Jeremiah chapter 51. Verse. I think it's 19. All right. Jeremiah chapter 51, verse 19. And it reads, And it reads, The portion of Jacob is not like them, for he is the former of all things, and Israel is the rod of his inheritance. All right. The Lord Yahweh tells about Wath is his name. Thou art my battle axe and weapons of war. For with thee I will break the nations. I will break in pieces, Salakia, the nations. And with thee I will destroy kingdoms. So there you have it right there. Yahweh Bashmiah Shai. That's how much he loves the elect of the nation of Israel. Okay. This is what the Lord has planned for his elect. Not You're not just his chosen people just to be sitting here looking pretty. No, he's, his elect men are going to get spiritual power in Jacob's trouble. And it, they're going to do damage. And there's the proof. Let me get that precept real quick. One of my favorites. The book of St. John, chapter 14, verse 12, to get right to the point, it reads, this is very letter, so Lord, how was I speaking? Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. So right here, Lord, how was I saying for those that believe on him, who believe on him, in, in, in truth and sincerity? The apostles and others, the great millstone, and the occupant down and teach the likewise doctrine. All right? So those men, all right, whoever's lot it is to be in Jacob's trouble, going through the persecution, all right, those men will receive spiritual power and do even greater miracles than Yahweh Shai. And Lord Yahweh Shai did some, he did some next level miracles when he was on the scene 2,000 years ago. So do the math on that if you can receive it. This is what the Lord means when he says uh, he, you are his battle axe. The Lord himself is not going to come down as a giant spiritual figure and just start causing no he the lord can do it however he wants to and the way he chooses to do it is to send his servants he's going to raise up his prophets whom these niggas he's two-third niggas and these heathen think they're going to keep on oppressing give them spiritual power all right the beloved prophet elijah he rained down fire from heaven okay moses part of the red sea lord yahweh shy okay he was raising uh he was raising people from the dead healing lepers and other miracles that's not even written about in the books all this to say they did all this through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashmi al Shai and Lord Yahweh Shai himself confirmed that the Lord is indeed going to turn the dial up so yes the Lord he's dealing with you the two thirds are going to be out here <laughs> getting jacked up man they're gonna get the same treatment as the heathen they're gonna be bugged out like the heathen but you the elect of the nation of israel the so-called negroes latinos native americans and speckled bird you are going to be in good case you are going to be straight and let me prove that because you have these precepts right here as your comfort isaiah chapter 33 verse 6 and it reads and wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times and strength of salvation the fear of the lord yahweh bashmi al shah is his treasure so the two-thirds don't got it man they want to keep being out here being on sexy red uh sukiana uh uh pussy hole pink booty hole brown type time let them be on that and see how that profits them in jacob's trouble but you got yahweh bashmi al shah in your corner if you continue to endure all right and do what's pleasing unto yahweh bashmi al shah but that's all I have for this epistle. Hopefully this lesson was edifying and exhorting to the elect of the nation of Israel, to the hopeful elect of the nation of Israel. Once again, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to our beloved Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son, our beloved Lord and Savior, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rechach, Wadash. Double honors as always to the apostles, the elders, and the saints, the Akim of Great Millstone, who rule well, who teach well, who we learn the truth from daily, whether you hear for bearing sincere citations as always to the hopeful elect of the nation of Israel, as well as the speckled bird among that number, which are the Hebrews, like foreigners scattered among the heathen, that look like the heathen. Kwam Yasharala and the Baba Ball. We're almost out of here. Adawan Ratazah, and we got next Adawan Ratazah. Shema, Yasha'ala, Yahweh, Allah, Yahweh, Yahweh.
Akhad. Shalom.